This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello. How can we ensure that the post-operative refractive outcomes of manual SICS are comparable to that of phacoma emulsification? Well, we all know that the high surgical induced astigmatism is the single most important disadvantage of manual SICS when it is pitted against phacoma emulsification. And can we achieve a predictable and relatively low surgical induced astigmatism consistently with manual smudging cataract surgery? and we should try to achieve a post op refraction of 0.5 cylinder or less in most cases and this should be the refinement of the technique which we should aspire to make our results comparable to that of phacoma emulsification and this can be primarily achieved by practicing two important principles number 1 temporal incision this will reduce the sia significantly compared to the superior incisions Shifting temporally is probably the first thing one should try to do and it has got a significant advantage because majority of our cataract age group patients have a pre-existing against the rule astigmatism and by simply shifting temporally we have a great opportunity to correct it. Number 2 and the more difficult aspect is to learn and master the nucleus bisecting techniques manually. and this is going to reduce the incision size considerably and as a consequence the si is going to decrease significantly of course needless to say apart from these two major factors there are the usual surgeon factors that's how the wound is constructed the tissue handling the amount of cautery which is used etc etc so let's try to understand these two major factors the temporal incision and nucleus bisecting techniques Now shifting to temporal incisions on the superior ones is not very difficult at all there will be certain phobias to begin with for example one would miss the patient's forehead and would be wondering how to support the fingers but you will be surprised that one can adapt quite quickly enough so once you're proficient with doing a good small incision cataract surgery with the superior incision i think it's not going to be very difficult for us to switch to temporal one is just a shift to the mindset that's all is required The only disadvantage of the temporal incision is that some of the patients might have these subconjunctival hemorrhages at the incision site which would bother few of our patients but needless to say temporal incisions are clear winners over the superior ones now moving on to the next aspect and the more difficult one that is the manual nuclear division techniques A surgeon can consistently provide SIA of less than 0.75 diopters if he or she can master the nucleus division techniques and also can use the temporal incision. If we can control the surgical induced astigmatism and make it more predictable, then manual smudge and cataract surgeons can very well implant toric lenses and multifocals as well. We have few surgeons who are doing this in our country, but the numbers are very less. In our country and the world over majority of the manual small incision cataract surgeons practice the nucleus delivery without dividing it that is the most common techniques are phaco sandwich technique irrigation vectis technique blumenthal technique visco expression etc and most sic surgeons find nucleus division techniques quite intimidating but if you want to raise your standards and want to give results which are comparable to phaco emulsification we can't escape the fact that we need to learn to divide the nucleus inside the eye itself and in this series we'll try to address some of these fears and try to learn these techniques in a safer way there are many ways to divide the nucleus manually the most common technique at least in my state is the nucleus bisection technique in the anterior chamber where a vectis is used underneath the nucleus and a sinski hook or a cannula is used to fracture the nucleus into two fragments Then there is the snare technique which I've already published few videos on in my channel you can just have a look wherein we use a metal wire to loop around the nucleus and then to bisect it and lastly uh, we can also divide the nucleus in the capsular bag itself by using certain pre choppers and then prolapse the pieces out of the bag and then out of the eye So how should one learn these techniques 
Slow and steady wins the race. Before venturing, I think one needs to follow these principles very meticulously. Number one, understand the basics perfectly. Analyze what all can go wrong in every step and why can it go wrong. Watching the videos by other surgeons repeatedly or reading many times does help. However, the most important principle which I would like to stress is one should never learn these newer techniques by compromising on the safety of the eye. So that should be the most fundamental principle, never compromise on the safety aspect of the eye. So using the best OVDs and the instruments that one can afford is, will definitely help in minimizing the complications during the learning curve significantly. Well, the goal of this video was to motivate you to refine your surgical technique of MSICS uh, with the goal to provide better refractive outcomes to our patients but without compromising the safety. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.